I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to start at the beginning, but I'm going to take us rapidly. I see you are reading and looking. Let us go on a journey together. Let us explore the world, not merely its outside about which astronomers ask, of what is the world made, but its inside, where the question is, who am I? Let's begin a simple assumption. In the beginning, everything arose from one, from an incomprehensible desire that summoned the world to emerge as separate and distinct wholes. Life peeked out from a world not merely created, but a world created to create itself. Nothing, simply nothing, came from nothing. More complex forms emerged. Forms of seeing and forms of relating. It was a garden of now, of nothing but now. Yet there was no one to bear witness. Infancy, Adam. One day a creature was strolling in the garden of now. When it arrived at a place, it could hear the other creatures yowl. They hoot hooted and screeched to one another in friendship or enmity. And this creature assigned names to the birds of the sky, to the beasts of the field, to the sun, moon, and stars, to all that captured its attention. Upon naming the creation, the creature formed an interior world. What is it to name a thing? The creature looked, I am, I am Adam. And he danced for joy, for having named himself, he knew himself as separate and distinct. And he came to a tree with fruit, which grants the ability to invent narratives, to judge things and to rank them as better or worse. He ate from the tree of good and evil. And he felt vulnerable and he hid his face. And he said, I am dust in space, in time. And thus Adam was expelled from the garden of now, tossed into history, tossed into the world of yesterdays and tomorrows, of elsewhere and otherwise, tossed into suffering, and he cried, is the world enough as it is? And am I enough as I am? And he began to imagine and question. Whereas before Adam had experienced a single path, choices now appeared. Some were simple and some were momentous because stakes can be high in a world of meaningful choices. Adolescence, Cain. Adam had a son, Cain. Cain was born with a burden, the burden of I. I am born, I work, I try, I toil for one approval, then another. Yet at the end of this competition, I'll die. So Cain rose in resentment and murdered his brother. Whatever truth falls by your track, the world feels imbalanced 
and something seems wrong. If I pray to my God, do I hear something back? Or just tumbling notes of my song? Consider the tools from our hands that evolve and the tools from our minds that inspire. They are solutions to problems, but it is you must, you must solve. For tools are just tools. They can't put out our fires. When Cain stands at the mirror to examine his face and he peers into eyes of concern, he fears his existence is a mechanical race, that there's nothing to win and nothing to earn. He lowers his ladder to the heart of the matter and unspools his life's coil of thread. And he gets lost in a maze of stairways and pathways in the land of the din in the head. Oh, the thunder and thwacks, the finger pointing attacks. Cain cries, am I at the punchline in a satirical joke? Shall I bow down to form? Must I paint my life black as I trek through my me with my rope? How Cain's nightmares repeat as I drift through his sleep, as I bob on waves of unrest, as creation's debris, I crawled out from the sea. I am but DNA matter possessed. Freedom, I say, is to make things go my way. To be free is to shed inhibition. Are these really the ways to co-author life's play? To be free is to compose my life's mission. Maturity, Abraham. We've arrived at that point in our biblical tale, a knock-knock from beyond or within, that called to Abe's eye to abolish his little eye as he strode on his fragment of string. Abraham walked with his eye up the slope for a dance, for that meeting with time. It's that dance we'll perform at the end of our rope, at the tippity tip of our line. And he bound in a bag all he'd gathered through life, all his love, all his values and cares. And he raised up his voice as he lifted his knife. My eye is inflated with air. An angel appeared. She grabbed hold of Abe's wrist as the ego prepared to surrender. And she told him that the reason the eye must exist. It's the path to become your inventor. Consider your values, all your beautiful goals, all the dreams that your eye chases after. They clatter beyond and behind your control which is why your son's name suggests laughter. She asked Abe to count all the stars up above, but all he could do was get started. Within, something flickered. He felt infinite love, and with that, the archangel departed. Might we say, as we play, as we twirl in our hoop, in the light of wherever we stand, through the choices we make, it is the I we create. This is how we become. We're set free by our hand. We arise in spirals with our arrows and bows. Follow your rainbow, take aim. But it's you that you choose. By choosing, you grow. It is you 
It is you you attain. Are we fixed to a script? Are our stars all aligned in this magical puzzle in time? I'll restate the question with which we started our session, the puzzle that asks, who am I? Who am I? There will arrive a moment when I will let go of everything, everything. My heart will cease and my skeleton will return to the minerals. Sometime later, my name will be spoken for the last time. There is nothing to fear, nothing. Love brought me into the world and love will take me from it. During this interval, we discover ourselves through the world and the world discovers itself through us. We name the world and confer our values upon it. What an adventure, what a laugh. By choosing, we become a bit more free to invent ourselves and bear witness. An evolution of one. Adam said, I ate from the tree and I would eat it again. <clears throat> so that folks is my book. Um, definitely not a children's book, right? Everybody. Um, let me get you it. Thank you for reading. It's actually nice to hear it in your voice. Do you have that available in your voice? Like, you know, like you can buy books, but you can also buy books read by the author. Is this available in your voice somewhere? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea and it has been suggested to me. And um, I do plan to make it available online um, so that people who buy the book could have a kind of read along. Um, you, yeah. um, Okay. It's just, well, I'm saying it's a, you know, a special thing for CSP. We get to hear you read the yeah. book to us. So yeah. Yeah. here's um, people, please share your questions. Let me open the chat here to everybody. Um, people have been saying, well, I want to actually say a word about what you said. It's definitely not a children's book. You're, you're, you're right about that. That's for sure. On the other hand, I do call it a children's book for adults. And it's not just because the book is formatted like a children's book, which it is with, you know, pictures on every page and, and a, and a um, you know, a very laconic text. But um, I really do want the child in us to be able to come to it with uh, kind of an open faced um, kind of relationship with, with ready for adventure. Um, because it is an adventure, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the adventure of, of, of each of our lives, because we're going through it. We're, we're being born and we're, we're going to the end. And that's quite an adventure. So um, some of the questions I've seen already, what, what made you write this particular book? You know, who am I? What, what inspired you? Um, yeah, well, I guess with like with, there's so many ways to answer that question, but a very straightforward way is, I remember when I was a kid, um, my neighbor was a, a photographer of, uh, of sculptures and, and paintings, and he traveled around the world and he took photographs. And um, I was, I saw him often and he started taking photographs uh, and attaching phrases to the photographs. And he asked me like, well, you know, how do you like this? And I would look at the photograph and then I would look at the, at the, the text. And it was for me to somehow make a connection. And that was very exciting for me. That was, I think, the first time that I really had a <clears throat> Uh, kind of insight into this this conjunction between images and words, because um, that's what I'm doing. I'm try I'm attempting that with with my picture books. Do you do you write the whole book out and then go back and make the images, 
do you make the images then write the book do you write well, a page then do the image what, what's your structure here my structure is uh like the most inefficient structure that a human being could find namely i start on page one and i la allow page two to suggest itself the it starts usually with an image but sometimes the, the text is looking for the image and sometimes the image is looking for the right words to go with it so in truth i really this book and, and also the previous book really kind of led me along i am i am incapable of outlining anything i start at the beginning and it tells me where to go so it's extremely precarious and it i have hundreds of images that i put in and that had to come out along the way i spend you know i did spend you know probably a good three years on each book like pretty solid years of just you know trying to figure out where this book is taking me so it is it is really a book that is evolving itself I would say the, um, the images are really spectacular and obviously the words and that's why you have to have the book and we really kind of ran through it real quick and if people have questions about a particular image yes um, please ask and we'll we'll pick up the screen and go through those images but do the images exist as prints separate from the book so if Ahuva Ho is like I loved the image on page four I want to put it in my kitchen because it's so meaningful and deep can she order that get it is that possible or is it only in a book yeah it is possible it is possible to do because uh, I have a studio where I sell also my vitriographs to which you referenced at the beginning and uh, people do inquire and we we do sell prints of, of each image. I, uh, I haven't, I've, it's certainly available. The, the, the first book, The Well of Being, is the images are available that way. Um, I'm not 100% about this, this recent book because it's new and we haven't maybe gotten up to speed to making them available but in theory yes so um a question i asked you when we first talked about this when talia introduced me you and i had a a, 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 a zoom meeting you were in new york i think at one of your ch children's homes and we went through the book and i asked the question which is um it is really deep and, and maybe it needs a compendium. So that's a side question we'll get to, like an explanation as to the art and what you're trying to get. Or maybe you don't want to do that because you want people to figure it out themselves. I don't know. But there's no women in this book. So can you talk about that? Um, it's really about man or men. What happened to yes. the women? Yes. Well, uh, you know, in my view, you know, and in fact, Hazal, you know, speak about Adam being a, you know, some androgynous being. It is, you know, I, I did have to select the, the, the sex of it. Um, but in my view, it's, it's, you know, it's every man or woman. Further, um, maybe more to the point, this book is very autobiographical. And there's, you know, there's only one figure in it. So there are no women in it, but, but, but you know, you, you have to add that there, there's only one figure. Um, and it's, in many ways, it's me. Um, and, um, and that's because the story that I'm telling is about everybody. And does the figure does look a lot like me, if you'll notice. Uh, so, um, and that, um, so this book and, and the previous book, you know, has the same figure and it's kind of, it's kind of the same, um, you know, format, a man at a, at a train station waiting for the train and, um, you know, going through life. So it's, yeah. So I, I you know, I, I've heard the complaint and it's a reasonable complaint, but there was no way around it um people ask where's the text you just showed us the images the text on the bottom of each page correct? oh yeah I, I i should have mentioned at the beginning the fact is is that a lot of the images run across two pages and i just uh, the by and large the text is on the left side 
And uh, so I eliminated it for this purpose. But the book, of course, has the text on both sides, and you lose a lot of the um, you lose a lot of the uh, images. But here, let me show you, for example. You know, so it's a big book, here. everybody. That's one thing to note. So it's yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of coffee table book, and the images, most of the most of the the text. So you know, some are simple, and then you have the image. The ice cream cones. Notice you have the ice cream cone on the one page. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, we can see it. And then the next page, you have right. you have Gandhi and Hitler, right? Yeah. You know, these are the two other options. You know, these are different different choices that we make because I'm I'm speaking about you know about choosing. Um, and the fact the, that choosing is a, is a capacity that we develop in order to become a, a unique separate self. I mean, there's a whole philosophy embedded in this book. And, um, oh, let me just say that in the back of the book, there are, there are extensive notes. Um, and, um, uh, and commentary. Um, so, but that's not, you know, that's not possible in a, in, in this format. So what, what, I mean, it obviously takes a lot of time to think through the words you want to put in there because you want to make it as simple as possible, but as meaningful as possible. And so one question that came up was, which is harder for you, the words or the images? In other words, what took more time for you to get right the way you were happy with it? The exact words you want on each, on each page or the image that goes with those words? I think it's, I think, uh, I'll, I'll say guardedly that I think it's the words that are uh, more of a struggle for me. Yeah. Um, Do you have, I mean, you're an artist. You've been an artist your whole life. Um, actually, I, I, I got interested in, in, in art right when I, just when I finished my undergraduate study. So I went to a school where there was no art making, but uh, as soon as I finished, I got interested in art and I attended, uh, you know, uh, School of Visual Arts in New York. And that's where I met Rachel. Do you have, um, what is your interest in philosophy? Do you have a philosopher you like? Who Who is like, who influences you? Does this, who is coming, you know, if a philosopher came back from the past and looked at your book, which one would say, "Oh, that's my stuff"? That I see that you, you read yeah, me. I don't, know. I don't know, but I, the, you know, I, I think uh, I, 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 I think I'll be misleading when I say Emmanuel Levinas has been kind of like the most stunning, uh, you know, discovery I I ever had. Um, and, um, but I went to a school that was, you know, it was the great books program, St. John's College is a tiny little school. And they, they have the, you know, that you, you read through the, the Western canon. It's not popular these days, because uh, we know that uh, they're all just a bunch of dead white men who wrote them and they're of no interest. But um, that's what I studied for four years. Has your art changed since you moved to Israel? Has Israel affected your art, or is it your art no, separate no. from Israel? Yeah, I think I think I would just it wouldn't matter where I am. It would be the same whether I was in Israel or Kansas or on the moon. Rochelle Amberson, one of our resident CSP artists, asked a question about one of the images, and she says the rope that Abraham carries resembles the egg in which Adam begins. The child seems to be carried with us, but in in maturity becomes transformed. Is this what is intended to be conveyed? So it's a question about that image. Is I that... love it. I love it. I love it. But let me also add, no, I really like that. But, you know, part of, you know, like part of the openness of the imagery and the, and the, and the very laconic text uh, allows people to bring some of their own, their own ideas into it. And um, 
And I could, you know, knowingly shake my head, yes, that's exactly what I meant, but not necessarily. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll own it when it's not mine really to own. Rochelle also uh, points out the railroad track mm -hmm. um, images. And yeah. it said it took her immediately, immediately to the Shoah, which did yeah. me as well. And is that yeah. also, and then because you have Gandhi and Hitler, um, was that also intentional? Or again, is that the same answer? Yeah, you... yeah, no, that's that, that's there. And in the first book, it's actually m much more overt. The first book, The Well of Being, um, which um, uh, this is really in a sense a, this is a sequel to that book. But yes, the railroad tracks are the railroad tracks of life. And, you know, along the tracks is Auschwitz. And I think it's embedded in our, in our spiritual psyches uh, that we cannot get away from, from that, that, from that. Can you tell us a little bit about you and your art, a little bit more about like who inspired you in your artistic journey? Uh, you mean like uh, artists who who? Yeah, I, like um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Who are, who are I mean, your inspirations I, and your yeah, story? Yeah, I think yeah. My inspirations have been mostly, I would say, the classic modernists, um, and uh, you know, I think I, Paul Clay. I remember I went, I traveled to Europe and I went. I made a special trip to to uh, Basel to see. Paul Clay's uh, work, um, and I wasn't even really that involved. I, I hadn't started painting at all, but I, but there was something. There's, I think I'm um, a soul brother in a way because there's there's something very childlike about his work, and, and at the same time a underlying sophistication. Um, so I would say it's that I, I would I would name him, but I could name other people too. Um, there was a question about. Oh yeah, Saul Steinberg. Saul Steinberg. Okay. Oh my gosh, Saul Steinberg, amazing, very inspiring for me, and also, you know, I really learned from him. I learned everything. I stole from him like, like, like a really such a thief. <coughs> I would be ashamed of myself, but he's amazing, and he taught me about how to how to embed ideas in, you know, in images. He's the guy who did all the uh, covers for for uh the new yorker brilliant brilliant american artist so you i think when you and i spoke you told me that both books you self-published is that correct and the first one was then picked up by an, a publisher the first one was was i did sell i, I saw i saw published both first one was picked up by uh, my by mcmillan and um you know it got translated into chinese and korean and portuguese and german and um, um, it was, it's in its third or fourth printing now. It's, um, do you know where, nice. do you know where in the world it's like most popular? Is, is it New in York, Hebrew? Yeah. New York, LA, Chicago. Yeah. Is it, is there a Hebrew version? There, there's a coming, I, I want to, I want to, I want to have it, um, I want to have it printed in, in, in Hebrew. Yeah. I'd like to have a Hebrew Arabic version, um, two of them together, but I need some kind of NGO with lots of money to, to make that happen. Oh, well, look around this room. I mean, gosh, there, anyone in this room can make it happen. You just tell us and we'll, we'll make it. Clear. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. I'll talk to Ann Spector. She knows a lot of people in San Diego. Um, our, Anita wants to know, when you start your paintings, have you conceptualized what you want to do or do you yeah. kind of, okay, so. Yeah, yeah I'm, trying to, I'm trying to come up with a way that would maybe take a page in writing and put it into a, a, an image. Um, but yeah. do you so, think, yes, I mean, is, so, the whole I'm, image, I'm, yeah, is the whole image ready to go in your head and you just achieve yeah. it or is it evolve as you are start when you once you start the the particular piece you know i think i have an idea like say you know well you know it depends there's some that are very very simple like you know like the ice cream cones where that's just you know push it i just just have to draw it out and that takes me 10 minutes 
So, but others take a while to figure out. And then I have to adjust the, the words because it's saying something diff slightly different. Um, right. Yeah. You said the first book and this book are autobiographical or biographical. Um, can you say a little bit more about that? In what way are they autobiographical? Is it just because you think about these issues or are they actually relate to specific parts of your biography? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, I, I don't know if this makes it makes it autobiographical, but, but, you know, I, I, I consider myself the book's first reader. It's a book that I write because that's what I spend my time really thinking about. Um, that's what I think about. So I might as well draw pictures of it and it becomes a kind of a meditation for me. Like, that's really what I'm doing is is spending time with these ideas and it's kind of thinking them through. So, yeah. So we, we mentioned before that your wife, Rachel, who you met at SVA is an artist. She's a sculpt, she, she's a, she does sculpture, right? Um, That's right. Do you, when you're doing your work, do you like show her stuff? I mean, do you, is your work solitary or are you interacting with, with your wife or maybe your children or other people um, to get their input? No, I don't show it to anybody. Does your family read your book? Like have you yes. your kids and yes. do they? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're very proud of what my, of my book, but I, I, I can't include anybody in the making of it. It really is. It, it, it's I can't show it to anybody, um, not until it's done or nearly done, and then I, and then I really solicit, uh, you know, as much fierce criticism as I can get. Yeah, and I'm not afraid of that, but I am afraid until it's cooked. Do you do you change your book if you get criticism, or do you, have you kept your each book basically the same as when no, you finish it? No, I don't change it? it. I don't change it at all. I make I I improve it. But you, okay, that's what I meant. Well, improve no. is changing. So you like if if you like if no, someone I mean, said, "Oh, I think this word would be better," would you yes, take that uh, and you would change the word? Oh, totally. That's what I'm looking for. Totally, but not it's it, it's you know it, the 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 work comes from you know the content is is um you know that comes from me uh, since you yeah. moved to israel have you found an arts community are you part of a, a larger community there, or do you still kind of work in a solitary fashion well i i work in a very solitary fashion but uh rachel is much more plugged into the communities i mean i have shown my work uh in israel and i've been fortunate to to do that to to some some really good effect. Um, but Rachel is, you know, much more out there as a sculptor, you know, making work, and she has a gallery. And, um, you know, people are very excited about what she's doing. I just hang on to her coattails. That's, that's what I do. Uh, tell us about your first book and how it's different from this book. What's, what's the focus of the first book? The first book is about, you know, about about well-being, you know, about, you know, I call it the well of being, a children's book for adults. Um, it's about, you know, wh where does well-being come from? It's about um, uh, what it feels like when we lose our well-being. It's about how, how we might recover our well-being because we do lose it all the time, in fact. And so I, 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 explain how we lose it and why we lose it and it um it's a uh, i think it's a simpler book than this one that we just read but i think it's um it's very accessible it's an easier book to understand and and ask the question and since she's being honored I, I tried to get all her questions in today but so you're writing your book but in the meantime you're making money by selling other art correct so what that's right. So how do you divide your day between like your passion projects, which is this book? I don't know if you're working on a new book, by the way, and your, and, and um, so you can tell us about that in a second, but between that, between doing your books and doing what pays the bills, how do you divide your day? Well, um, I have people working in the studio um, and I, uh, uh, you know, I, des I design um the vitriographs i have a daughter 
I have two daughters who are involved in Jean-Pierre Weil Studios. Uh, and one of them is a painter. She works in as a as as a oil painter, um, and uh, there they help produce the work and distribute the work. Um, I also have like you know twenty five thirty years of work under my belt, so um, you know many of them are you know limited editions and. Uh, you know, at this point in my career, I'm really kind of focused on on my book writing, and and now on on my third and final book of this series, of this trilogy. What's it going to be called? I don't know. Right now, it's something like the Ballad of of Moses Sapolsky, but I have no idea what it'll be called. Can you tell us I, what it's about in general? It's about relationships. It's about about the, the the importance because the, as you notice in the first in two books, there's a kind of it's a rather lonely figure who is trying to figure it out by himself. But the third book is really about the nature of relationship and 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 love. For those of us who are not artists, can you tell us what a vitriograph is, and can you show us one? Do you have one there so we can see what one looks like? Oh, yeah, I could show you one because, okay, hang on one second. I'll be back in one second. Commercial break, everybody. So I think you can get both of his books on Amazon. Um, I have them. They really are big and, and they're great. And if you like art or you want something deep to read. Okay, so this should be recognizable because it's in my book, right? So this is on glass. It's on multiple levels of glass. And there's also wire in there. So you, it's hard. There's a kind of trompe l'oeil effect that I do. Um, with a, lot of, a lot of my vitriographs. Um, what was your question? So like, what is a vitriograph? Oh, it, well, first of all, I, I coined the term. And uh, okay. I trademarked the word Vit vitrio, vitrine in French is a window. Right. So a vitrine, a vitri like lithography, is the repeating and uh, the repetition of or, or the printing, um, repetitive printing, like lithography and serography and so on. So I just used that word because I use glass. So I call it vitriographs. So, uh, you know, I came up with the idea. Um, that was just pure luck. Um, so, there so, but, four, but there, there are four layers, one behind the other in a shallow space. Um, and so it, it creates the, the impression of drawing in three dimensional space. It's really kind of like, it's like good eye candy. Uh, it's, it's a little bit, you know, there's something a little magical about it. And so the, the, the vitriographs you sell mm -hmm. that aren't related to the book, are they purely commercial or are they, have you, do they have spiritual elements to in it, in them that if you look, you'd find them or have you kind of segmented your work into commercial, you know, art and spiritual art? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me, let, I'll just give you a really quick answer. Um, but I have to, I have to, you know, go way back. Um, when I got interested in art, I was in my mid twenties and I, I was interested in painting and I was interested in, you know, you know, rarefied museum, um, work. I was a serious artist. I put it in scare quotes, but I, I, you know, I was passionate about it, but I, uh, and then I joined a company, a family business, um, I had, I had five children and um, I, the business uh, was let go and I, um, I decided to become a professional and I went to, um, went back to graduate studies um, and, um, but I had five kids and I needed money. So I quit and I, um, I decided that I would um, come up with something that I could make with my hands. I mean, I was really not very employable. 
I had studied the the, the classics of of Western literature and, and philosophy and mathematics. And so I came up, you know, I had I gave myself three months and I I I was just started playing furiously, looking for something that I could make that was that was different, something that was reproducible, something that looked like it took a lot of time, something that that nobody else was making. And it was at a time when the, the market was great in the early 90s and I started selling them in craft fairs and um, you know it was really driven by the product and before I knew it we had a dozen people working helping me make it it was just it was it was just manna from heaven because it was a difficult time but I, I put on a different hat the hat was like, I need Parnassa. I, I have kids. I have, uh, I was, I was raised to uh, take care of my family, notwithstanding the fact that I hadn't given it much thought when I got one family, but there you go. Life is funny. So, um, you learn when you have to learn, but that's what it is. So the answer is yes, it's commercial, but uh, I, I enjoyed making it and it, it's got a, you know, there's, there's something, something I'm very proud of, even though it wasn't quote unquote serious work. It's, um, it makes people happy. And I was, um, you know, I feel honored that I found something that would take care of me. If people, can people see your art in LA, New York? I mean, can, is there a place they can actually go see it or is it? I mean, I know they can see it online, but how do you go see? Yeah, at this stuff? point, since I moved to Israel, you know, we, I had galleries in, you know, all over the United States. Um, but, um, you know, and they were commercial galleries and you find them in every kind of mid-sized city. Um, and uh, that's what I did. But when I, when I closed my business and then we reopened in Israel. And so there's a... You know, we, we, there's a gallery in Mamila in Jerusalem that, uh, you know, that carries my line along with, uh, you know, one other artist. Um, and, you know, Hashem, I say. Right. Well, that, I challenge to you guys going to Israel right now is to go find the art and take a picture of yourself next to this art and send it to me. So, yeah. So we can, uh, or you can go find, you, you can go find, um, uh, Jean Pierre somewhere. Do you have a place you hang out? I mean, do you like Israel is is a small country, but it's a big country. Do you tend to? Yeah. Are you a person who just stays in your studio all day, or do you go adventuring? If you go adventuring, I, where do you like to go? Because Ahuva is going to be there. I want to make sure she goes somewhere cool. I, I, I she's there right now, actually. Yes. Yeah, I would welcome anybody to contact me, and uh, just just contact me at jeanpierreweil dot com. Yeah. Is that it? Jean-Pierre-Wild.com or jean pierre Wild Studios.com. I think it's jean pierre Wild .com. Well, that's And right you, you can contact me and I'll take you through my studio and to Rachel's awesome studio and you'll have a memorable time. And wow. Well, this is only exclusive for CSB members, right? Only like, members. For this year who are members. Absolutely. Dead. Absolutely. Nobody else is allowed. What the hell? How, how do people like where 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 people find you like where are where's your gallery i mean where's where's your workshop my workshop is in tokoa um and uh we've i've got a large a very large studio there lovely studio that you know you can stop in and sit on a couch and get a nice cup of coffee and uh look at the work and then walk five minutes and see rachel's studio and then you can come back to my house and uh i'll give you lunch how many people can you fit because we're trying to bring about 40 people to israel in october can you fit that many in your house absolutely oh in my house yeah i could huh? I mean, okay, in my studio yeah. my my well let me just say this the jean pierre wall studios could easily hold 40 people that's for sure and there are buses that come and you know it's a little bit when people come to tokoa it's a, it's a community that's known for its craft artists and um uh you know rachel and i are among them and uh yeah you could, could definitely be, do that 
Well, it's very nice for you to extend this to our audience here. So it's about, you know, 60 people may show up tomorrow, but do people really come to visit you? Do you have guests that come like that email you and you're like, sure. Or is that sure. rare? They come? No, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's, it's a studio that's making stuff. It's not, it's not walk, you know, you don't walk into the place off the street. You know, we're in a community, a closed community, but um, yeah, there are buses that come and stop in. Uh, two days ago, uh, there were how many people? 25. 25, 25 art teachers came to Rachel's studio and, and, and to my studio. Can you put Rachel on for that one second? Yesterday. Can Rachel, Rachel can you join us for one second? Uh, sure. Since you are hi. the well, hi, welcome to CSP. You're another artist. Can you tell us about your art real quick? Yeah, come sit down here. My art. Yep. I make wood sculpture, abstract sculpture. It's um, it's something you one needs to experience because um it's not a thing but there are like beings that you encounter when you walk into a gallery space i will be having a an exhibit in washington september 2023 at the katzen museum which is at the american university and i've been working for two years now to make a incredible show for that opportunity awesome well, thank you for joining us here at the end of our program. We get to meet you. I've heard great things about you as well. So what a great opportunity that Talianne has given us. Two artists for the price of one. I'm going to um, let Jean-Pierre back. Okay. So we'll say goodbye. Bye, yeah, we, come, we come as a team. You get, you get double for your money. Okay. Well, as long as you could do like, you know, I'll get you the orders for tea and coffee. We'll get our group coming up. But Ahuva is in Israel. So Ahuva, get off your tuchus. Go visit okay. Jean-Pierre, please. I want a picture of you with Jean-Pierre and Rachel. Okay, and if anybody's going to Israel, you got to do this. This is something I think we'll try to do it when we get there. We'll try yeah, to you know, I, I'm, I'm not being facetious when I say I'll welcome 40 people. There's no question about it. And they'll, they won't forget it either. I, I, would I mean, I would love to get to Tekoa. When we come to Israel, it's very important to explore Israel. And that's a, we have not been there. I've heard about it now. Um, sounds like a very interesting place. I'm not going to go into politics. I, we'll stick with arts. Sounds like a very art-centered place. Um, my last question to you is, so you moved to Israel five years ago. What have you enjoyed most since you moved to Israel? What is your, like, you probably had certain expectations, but what, what have, like, besides family, I know you told me you live right near your grandchildren and there's probably nothing better than that, but is there anything about the land or being in the land or being in Israel that just made it worth it or just it sticks out when you wake up in the morning? What, what, what can you share for the, with this group as we end? I love the Jewish people. It's pretty simple. I love the Jewish people. They're, we're a family. It's a contentious family. And, uh, but that's what it is. And so I feel like I'm at home. And, uh, you know, somehow there's a mission that is unfolding and it's a privilege to be part of it. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Talianne, for the introduction and Spectre for being a great supporter of CSP, all of you for making programs like this happen. We went from Erwin Chemerinsky, which is completely different to Jean-Pierre and philosophy and art. That's the beauty of CSP, really, is that we can do everything and we do everything. And it's thanks to you and people like Louise Sherby and our synagogue partners like the Brotherhood Synagogue and Beth Israel in San Diego and... Louis Sherby Synagogue, Town and Village. Um, so thank you all for uh, being with us today and share this, uh, this story with your friends. I think people will enjoy it when they see it. People probably have no idea about, and it's gonna be hard for you to explain. No, it's a book with pictures, but it's deep. And it's this guy and he's French, but he would learn in America and he lives in Tacoa and he invited us. You're all going to his house for tea. Okay, that's about that, that's how I sum it up, right? Thank you, Jean-Pierre. All right, thank you so much. Up. Thank you for thank you for the opportunity. It's um, I'm honored and I really appreciate it deeply. Thank you for sharing your art, your personal story, because it is all of our stories and um, very deep. It's Jewish but universal. Um, awesome. Okay, Talianne, you want to say one thing? I'll let Talianne say one thing. Go ahead, Talianne. One thing. Uh, one thing is buy his books, and it definitely when he talked about um, the well of being 
It's a meditation. Uh, you will be so, um, you'll be so glad that you bought both the books, but um, I think they both, they're book, book ends for each other. And I look forward to the third, but definitely buy his books. Thank you. Okay. Jump here. Be safe. Be careful, everyone. Be All careful. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Bye. so much. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bye-bye.